What's happening everybody? I hope you're well. Now, a few weeks ago on this channel, I asked you how you felt about a new segment and it was a very relaxed Sunday morning cup of Rosie Lee with me. So today we're going to do it. I asked you how you felt about it. You said that you'd like it. You gave it a thumbs up, which I'm very grateful for. So I thought we'd put it into effect today. The Rosie Lee we're going to be drinking is, it's an organic Japanese sencha. Sounds good, eh? Uh, and we have gone for the totally mini mug. Um, we are going to be talking about Arsenal. Ooh, bit piping hot. As were Arsenal, in fact. Um, they were fantastic. They beat West Brom 4-0 at the Hawthorns. And it was a game that I thought they could slip up in. I really did. I rate Allardyce. I'm old enough to remember when Allardyce was a real thorn in Arsene Wenger's side. He used to bully that team. His Bolton side would bully that Arsenal team. Um, that Arsenal team were full of artists, by the way. They were fantastic. I'm talking about 05, 06, something like that. That Arsenal team were just magnificent. And the Bolton team were fairly good, but also fairly average. But Allardyce got it right against Wenger all the time. And I thought, you know, these, these memories, they stick with you. You know, when, they, when you think about Allardyce versus Arsenal, it isn't quite the true story that he always gets good results against Arsenal. He actually doesn't. But he was such a problem to Arsenal for such a significant part of the Premier League era that it's kind of stuck with me. But you would think, wouldn't you, a snowy night at the Hawthorns is perfect for an Allardyce side fighting relegation to take something from the cosmopolitan London elite club of Arsenal. Couldn't have been further from the truth. Arsenal had everything. They had grit, which is essential against Allardyce, but crucially... They had grace. And I'm now wondering, this video, you know, we'll talk about the West Brom game, but we're about to spin on to what is the ceiling for Arsenal this year? And I'm going to go fairly left field. I think that they could now, oh, I think they could now challenge for the Champions League spots. I really do. They have taken nine points from three games. And the three games that they've taken those nine points from are the three games that I said they will get four maximum. Like a nine, double what I thought they would get. And this league is so tight that anything can happen. And I now think that they are a contender. Not favourite, but they're a contender. They've won three games in a row for the first time this season. They've looked good. They've been scoring goals for fun. Certain players have looked phenomenal. I mean, you know, we'll come on, we'll come on to that in detail in a moment. Um, Bukayo Saka... Unreal, one of the best young players in the league. In fact, you could almost make a case of being one of the best players in the league. Um, but yeah, he has he has been outstanding for them. But we're also going to have to talk about Emil Smith Rowe. Um, and what they managed to do, they've got the young players playing well, pulling the strings, fighting. But then, you know, the experience of a player like Lacazette, they've got him scoring. That's three different games that he has now scored in in a row. He was nowhere near doing that. And look, I'm not getting carried away here, Champions League after beating West Brom. I'm fully aware about how poor West Brom are. I'm fully aware that Sam Allardyce is looking like he may well go down for the first time in his career. Although I still wouldn't put him past him to get out of it. But, you know, it's looking really bad. They've now conceded 13 goals in four games. So I appreciate that this result in a vacuum isn't especially significant. You would kind of think that Arsenal, even, even the Arsenal win... 2020 December would win this game but if you take it in context if you take it the fact that they've beaten Chelsea already this year the fact they've beaten Manchester United already this year the fact that they've won three in a row the fact that the young players are playing so well the fact that Thomas Partey is coming back looking like he's going to feature against Newcastle in the FA Cup the fact that Alexander Lacazette is scoring goals the fact that Pierre Eric Aubameyang is not playing well because he's class. We know he's class. We know he is a baller. We know he scores goals. So if they can get him playing well, the Champions League could be on the horizon. They also have a transfer window and it will be interesting to see how they how they approach that transfer window because they've been linked with Christian Eriksen. Eriksen is a very good player. It hasn't worked out for him at the San Siro and I can kind of see why. He's not quite the Antonio Conte player. Um... Everything that Antonio Conte does isn't necessarily Christian Eriksen. 
he, you know, he's slightly lightweight. Uh, he doesn't put in the effort, you know. And I think about the players that really thrived under Conte. It wasn't, it wasn't Ericsson. You know, people may make comparisons to say Cesc Fabregas, but Fabregas is really, really hard. Puts in loads of tackles, wins the ball consistently. And that side of his game is often underrated. Christian Eriksen doesn't have that. So I can see why it hasn't necessarily worked out for him. But I do rate Eriksen. He has the ability to play a pass that 90% of footballers can't even see. So if they were to sign him, there's also talk of Buendia. Scored a blinder for Norwich yesterday. By the way, have you seen that goal? Unbelievable volley. Um, I mean, Kieran Tierney deserves a mention here. Scored a fantastic goal, although... What's that defender doing? I'm learning on the job here on this segment because I need to make this tea way earlier than I start recording because all I'm really doing is like burning my mouth to bits. So I'm going to have to leave Minnie Mouse seated over there momentarily. But yeah, I thought uh, Kieran Tierney looked excellent. Looks hungry. Man's not cold. Man's never cold. Uh, he, looked, he looked great. Scored a good goal. The defending was atrocious, but not taking anything away from the young lad. Great goal from him. And this young Arsenal team are thriving now. They really are. You know, if you look at Tierney, Smith Rowe, Martinelli's looked good when he's played. Saka, excellent. You know, you even had a situation where Ozil, who, oh God, he's another player. See what I mean when you think about the Champions League beckoning for Arsenal and being a possibility. If somehow Mikel Arteta can convince Meza Ozil to give himself fully for the last six months of what is probably his Arsenal career. Who knows? Who knows what could happen? He has it in him to galvanise that Arsenal team. Meza Ozil on his own, for the, but if you think of what he could achieve between January and the end of the season, he's got to be worth 12 points on his own, hasn't he? That could be enough to propel Arsenal into the top four. But he actually, he actually said talking about Smith Rowe, I think he called him the, the difference or the game changer. Can you imagine that? For a young lad from Croydon being told by Meza Ozil, one of the one of the best to have ever played the game, arguably, that he is the difference. I mean, an outrageous, an outrageous statement. Actually, I know, there's two outrageous statements there because that was outrageous, but also me saying he's one of the best. He's a, he's a very good player of his era, but not quite. Do you know what happens with me when I talk about Ozil? Always think back to that 2010 game against England, where he just bossed it. Outrageous from him that was. But uh, I was being slightly too, uh, slightly too lavish with my praise on him. But no, look, Arsenal now. The crucial thing for them will be Thomas Partey. If they can get him back, if they can get him playing to his best, then anything is a possibility. Anything because he is. You know, he could transform this Arsenal team. An Arsenal team that's already resurgent. An Arsenal team that's already on the up. If he were to, if he were to you know, hit the ground running, get a number of games under his belt, play the way that we know he can, play the way that he played at Old Trafford, for example, Arsenal are going to be challenging. And it is a worry for the rest of us. Why do I keep doing that? Rosie Lee is boiling. I must leave it alone. Um, it's a worry for the rest of us that have aspirations at the Champions League because you must... Definitely concede that the three teams that are competing for the league, two Manchester clubs and Liverpool are going to make the Champions League. Whatever happens above the Champions League level, they're going to make that. Which effectively leaves about six of us competing for one spot. Which, you know, the odds aren't good. And it puts huge pressure on Chelsea today. Chelsea against Man City today. The club cannot suffer another defeat. We really can't. If we suffer another defeat, I think that we probably the least likely of the contenders to make the Champions League. So we must get points on the board today. It's essential. Arsenal bouncing back to form is not ideal for us. Uh, so we'll have to see. I do hope that you have enjoyed this video. I genuinely do. Um, please let me know if you have. Uh, maybe give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, also let me know. Don't be too mean. Don't be too malicious. But if you could also let me know, it means I can monitor it and then you won't see it if you don't like it. And if you really enjoyed it and you really want to make... Uh, an old man happy as his team are about to lose today, I assume. You could click the subscribe button. See it all in a bit. Again.